The Rising of the Shield Hero has tackled many difficult themes from its inception, with the first episode it basically challenged the whole Me Too movement. Remember how controversial that was? Seems so tame now. And by the end of the very same pilot episode, asked audiences to evaluate the ethics around slavery. People like mine, <clears throat> Sloot, finally got what she deserved. A bit too little in my opinion, but at last it feels good to say that some justice was served. And due to those questionable beginnings between Nafumi and Raftalia, she's now one of the most free of her people in the entire country of Melremark. Now enter Rishia, everyone's favorite shy cosplaying errand girl, who is about to kick off season 2 of Shield Hero by teaching us a very valuable lesson with her character arc. How not to be a victim. At the end of season 1, we were introduced to Rishia Ivy Red, who was seen fighting in the Bow Hero's party during the last wave, and then crying by herself. But who exactly is she? And uh, why so sad? Now, in order to explain this, slight manga spoilers ahead, but also, the anime just leaves out a ton about Risha's backstory, training, unique magic abilities, and whatever the heck key is. Honestly, <laughs> I might have to do a separate video entirely on what was left out from the original source material between the end of season 1 and this first episode. Contrary to her clumsy demeanor, Risha's actually a very intelligent girl from a semi-noble family, She's so smart, in fact, that she, uh, couldn't decide what to major in while attending school in Fabri. Fabre? Fab Fabri. Fab Fabri. Fabrice. Fabrice. That's the one. Her parents fell out of favor with other nobles and powerful groups for opposing royal decrees and resisting corruption. Things declined despite her family standing up for what was right, and eventually, a nobleman kidnaps her. And it's from this predicament that she is saved by Itsuki when him and his party kill the corrupt noble on the Bow Hero's authority. This background is important to note because Risha doesn't become this helpless victim overnight. Things start to break down in her country and a little bit in her family, but then she's kidnapped by this noble, has this horrible experience, and Itsuki suddenly saves the day. And from that event is where her attachment and codependency on him begins. Despite being very helpful in the last wave, and even saving the bow hero's life, Risha is eventually kicked out of Itsuki's party after she is falsely accused of breaking a bracelet. Eh, what'd you expect? This is shield hero after all. False accusations are kind of the backbone of this anime. Upon seeing her again, Itsuki basically says that she's useless, and of course this causes her to once again cry. Obviously. Now, Itsuki, for all his faults and mistreatment of Rishia and other people, at least for her sake, doesn't have a full-blown savior complex, and she's lucky, because if he did, then this would further encourage Rishia to put all of her happiness and basically all her self-worth in his hands, causing a cycle of interdependence between the two of them. It'd go a little something like this. Rishia feels like a victim, someone saves her which makes her happy to be with, work with, play with them, and then that savior, Itsuki in this case, would feel validated for saving the person in need, and will try to continue saving or providing for Rishia, which requires her to be a perpetual damsel in distress and totally dependent on him, and since Rishia always feels helpless, because that makes her happy, because that makes her savior happy, she'll happily oblige and play the victim. Risha is praised by Naofumi for her unique magic abilities, and for her ability just to be able to hold the sword. Ah, uh, poor Naofumi. Can't even hold a weapon. But this, and the fact that, again, she was the one who saved Itsuki during the wave, does little in the interest of persuading her that she's not completely useless. She wears the costumes not for fun, but so she can feel less identified when Itsuki and his party members embarrass her, or when she makes a mistake. Time and time again, she lets Itsuki's party members embarrass and degrade her, just so she can remain by his side, with someone and these party members that ultimately couldn't care less about her. She feels so indebted to him, in fact, that when she's eventually kicked out of the party, she searches that intelligent brain of hers and can't find a reason to go on living. 
and proceeds to go run out into the ocean and try to drown. But this is what I love about this anime. Who would have thought an isekai series based in a fantasy level up video game world would explore ethical questions, expose our culture which jumps to conclusions, and now will teach us valuable life lessons about relationships and the victim mentality. So how do we, and how will Rishia, break the victim mentality? We need to see ourselves as independent, talented, useful, have a purpose, and of course, we need to stop seeing ourselves as a victim and as a weak person. And what allows us to do this in almost any facet of life? Experience and confidence. Later in the episode, Rishia gains some experience in training and actually becomes Naofumi's technical slave in order to level up and instantly boost her stats. However, Rishia remains fairly devoted to Itsuki, and in fact this is her motivation as of right now to get stronger. Now, while I think it's great that she's not completely 100% dependent on the bow hero for her happiness and purpose in life, and while I like that she's warming up to Naofumi and crew, I, as I'm sure you all, look forward to her gaining confidence, seeing her unique abilities, and of course, her not being so blindly, loyally in love with the bow hero, becoming an independent, confident Rishia. That in and of itself shows us that breaking out of the victim mentality and gaining confidence can be a long, arduous process. I won't spoil too much about how Rishia goes about doing this, uh, it's safe to say that she starts to see herself for her unique abilities, especially when it comes to magic, and she will eventually gain confidence on the battlefield as the story progresses. Rishia will also see that helping friends and others and getting stronger is a far better long term investment than the all too alluring currency of victimhood which our culture far too often glorifies. It's like now Fumi said, who the heck decided that you'll have to remain weak forever? Remember guys, it's okay to be weak, it's not okay to do nothing about it. Anime life lessons with Truth Hero. <laughs> we should make that a series. But since I'm so excited for Shield Hero Season 2, yes! I want to hear from you guys. What road would you have Risha take on her journey to gain confidence and break away from the grasp of victimhood and dependency on the bow hero? What are you most excited about in the Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2? And because I'm excited about this show's premiere, I want to make content that you enjoy. What characters, themes, episodes, and just events of this story that you see coming up do you want me to make videos on? Only wrong answers down below in the comments. And until next time, see ya.